Welcome to the Expert Network Team podcast. Where our goal is to inform and educate our listeners on matters related to finance, legal, insurance, accounting, and other interests that are of personal and business nature. We hope you will find our content useful as well as entertaining. The Expert Network team consists of Carl Frank of AI Financial, Mike Miller of Miller and Associates CPAs, Jeff Cromendike of Security First Insurance Agency, and I'm Nathan Merrill. I'm an attorney at Goodspeed and Merrill. Together, our independent team combines our expertise to provide you insights and solutions, some straightforward, some profound, for real life opportunities we see on a daily basis. We hope you enjoy the information contained in today's podcast and find it useful. If you'd like to learn more or desire to meet with any of the Expert Network Team members in person, you can contact us at info at expertnetworkteam.com. That's I-N-F-O at expertnetworkteam.com. We encourage you to take advantage of a free consultation with any of our team members. Just mention this podcast when you schedule your appointment. Now on to today's podcast. Welcome to today's podcast. Uh, welcome, uh, team, to uh, today's interesting discussion. My name is Nathan Merrill. I am a founding attorney with the law firm Goodspeed Merrill. And today we have with us both Carl Frank of, remind me of the new brand name? a and Wealth Management. a and Wealth Management. That's an easy change. And then the other recent change participant is Jeff Kromendike, now with One Digital Insurance. Correct? You got it. Nate, I you think are... I need to change our firm's name now just to yeah. keep up with the Joneses. You almost have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so today, uh, interesting topic. I'll just kind of tee this up and, and, and let you guys kind of start with the initial questions or framing. But uh, one thing that is clearly happening in the marketplace is affecting a lot of people along with inflation uh, and one of the things driving some of this inflation is probably the increase in interest rates. Right. So, you know, it all starts with the Fed and, and Carl, you could probably explain how the whole interest rate environment works. But I believe it kind of starts with the Fed and what it's lending money to the banks at. And then eventually that impacts the bank's kind of profit profile. And so they'll lend out at higher interest rates to the rest of the market. What a trickle down. So I don't know, do you want to give some kind of overview on exactly get, what's going on? Yeah, or? I don't want to get too academic, but um, as interest rates go up, the business um, activity goes down. And so the whole goal with the Fed doing this is to reduce interest rate or increase interest rates to reduce inflation. Right. And, and, and the fear, of course, is that they're going to drive us into recession. But, you know, the, the latest economic data is the time we're recording. This looks like we might have a soft landing, like things are pretty optimistic for this year. And and uh, as interest rates go up, businesses need to change. And indiscriminately in 2022, in our world, a lot of a lot of equities, a lot of publicly traded companies went down in value indiscriminately just across the board. Everybody said sell because they're not sure about what the new value of these firms are. They're going to go and say they're going to use a new discount rate, a higher interest rate to determine the, the valuations of these companies. And that causes all the businesses just to run a lot more um, differently than they did in the past, where a merger or acquisition or something was you know easy to afford at a zero interest rate, it might be a lot more difficult at a six, a seven or an eight percent interest rate today. So that's the cause. The cause is the Fed and, and whether you love them or hate them, um, they're gonna keep on doing it until they believe that future inflation will be at a sustainable rate. So what we're going to be talking about today relative to the impact of those interest rate adjustments, I believe, is how it impacts certain planning opportunities from a kind of a legal and estate planning side. Yeah, and I'm it, excited to learn about what, what it's doing for your advanced planning needs, and, and, uh, and I can share what it's done for our clients as well. Yeah, and, and the important part there is a lot of what, how it impacts the planning side is dependent on what can be done on the investment management side because on the planning side we're not just uh you know there's always arbitrage involved whether it's uh capturing a delta between um growth rates and assumed growth rates when we'll go through all this but a lot of it has to do with the ability of the market to actually perform above the assumptions so we'll get into that um so Jeff, any questions from you to get us started? Yeah, well, 
with that, Carl, would you mind maybe just explaining the um, inverse relationship between interest rates and maybe the bond market? Um, usually there's a, for every action, there's a reaction and those typically sit on the opposite sides of the spectrum. So could you just explain that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we started uh, 2022 with low interest rates and bond price is really high. And and so if you're getting a 0% rate of return from the bank, then you're willing to buy a bond that used to be paying 5%, but you're willing to pay more for it. And so the price of the bond went up to get its rate down closer to 0%. And bonds entered last year at a really low interest rate, 1%, 2% return on your bonds, because people weren't getting their competitive rates of return from anywhere. They were getting interest rates anywhere. And so bond prices were really high, the interest rates are really low, and then the Fed started raising rates. And so as the Fed raised rates, then these bond prices went down and they went down so that the bond yield that they would give would be competitive with the rates of return you could get at the banks that you could that the Fed kept raising. So the bond prices kept going down. And last year was the worst year in bonds in history. Um, you know, I think the ag, which is a, a measure of bonds, was down something like 15 percent. It was a horrible year for bond investors. And now we're entering this year with yields pretty high. I mean, they've certainly been higher than they've been in a decade. And, and that's pretty exciting for people who want fixed income. They can get that from their in, investments. And it changes completely our investment landscape. And it changes the way businesses run. And, and I think, Nate, it's talking, uh, it's having a huge effect on, on the advanced planning opportunities. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. Uh, what the tax code giveth, the tax code taketh away. So... What I mean by that is, is some of these strategies are pegged indirectly to that tre U U.S. 10-year treasury, whatever. So um, what we call the 75-20 rate, or some people know it, it's kind of related to the applicable federal rate, which is the minimum interest rate that you can charge for like a re related party loan, stuff like that. So as the 10-year treasury goes up, so do these implied interest rates or implied discount rates. So, for example, when the interest rates were really low, one of the charitable strategies we were deploying was called a charitable lead trust. This is where you would put assets into a charitable trust um, with a dedicated annuity going out of that trust for a period of time. Um, and because the assumed or the discount rate or whatever you call it, the assumed growth rate of that trust was so low because interest rates were so low because the IRS just assumes that growth happens at the same rate as this treasury related calculation that if the market did better than heck it was down to like 0.6% at one point so if as long as the market did better than 0.6% you would be able to compress the value of that gift down to present value using a very small discount and so let's say it's a $2 million clat and it's spread out over 20 years. So over 20 years, you're going to give $2 million away as part of this trust strategy. You can take, you know, in that kind of construct, you can almost take a $2 million deduction today for gifts that occur over a 20 year period. So it's a great way to kind of compress future contributions to charity down to one period of time when you might have an offsetting event like a sale of a business or a big asset or a compensation event or something like that. So the interest rates really made that an attractive strategy because you got to compress it down without much loss in the value of your gift. Now, as that interest rate starts to climb, so we're up to, I think, 3% on that um, to get the same impact of discount, meaning you put 2 million into the trust and you want a $2 million um, deduction now, you have to compress the time period by which that goes out because the, the just, or you have to increase the amount of your gift or there's, there's a lot of different ways to toggle these things. But the reality is it's created some drag on the strategy where it's not as effective as it once was. And I don't know if that, does that make any sense? What <laughs> I just described, <laughs> because the whole idea of a CLAT, honestly, a charitable lead annuity trust is not, necessarily intuitive but but what you're really doing is saying i'm going to give to charity x amount for the next 10 20 15 years and i'm going to discount those gifts to present value 
the, the, the smaller the factor that goes into that discount, the greater the deduction you get to take. So it's, it's having your cake and eating it too, uh, very literally almost. Um, the, so as rates go up, that becomes less appealing to do a lead trust. Correct. So you take the same $2 million over the same period of time, you might only get a $1.5 million deduction. Mm. So 500,000 is being peeled off. And I mean, the good news is it's still going to charity. The bad news is you're not getting the, the, the full deduction. offset. So the way one of the things that makes that strategy effective is you're giving this money out over 20 years. And, and for most people who in, engage in this strategy, they're charitably inclined anyway. So you planned on giving that money away over that period of time. It doesn't have to be 2 million. It could be 200,000. It, it could be whatever it is. Um, so the good news is the charity is still getting money. The bad news is you're not getting that tax offset now because part of what makes the strategy work is say you're saving $500,000 in tax under the old interest rates, that's going down to 300,000 in tax savings now. You reinvest that 300 instead of 500 and kind of the long-term reinvestment return of time value of money that really makes the strategy attractive. Right. Um, so the fewer tax dollars you save, the less you're actually reinvesting and having the long-term offsetting growth off of. Right. So what are ways around it? What can you do? Well, that's the that's the strategy that you know. It's it's funny. Most of my career interest rates have been, well, they've been declining over most of my career, and they just got to just insane lows. We all know they got to insane lows over a period of time. Like I say, the the 75 20 rate got down to 0. 0.4, 0.6%, which has never happened in the history of the 75 20 rate. Probably an average of between two and four, which now seems like not as good as, as it once was because it's five times higher than it has been. But um, the flip side of the coin is the charitable remainder trust. And I know we've talked about this on previous podcasts. Sorry, I'm talking a lot here, but. Um, the charitable remainder trust works kind of inversely to the charitable lead trust. This is where the charity gets the remainder and um, you get the lifetime interest. So again, it, it ties to the same 75, 20 rate, but as the increase in return goes up or the assumed return that the IRS implies in this trust, the bigger de the deduction gets because you get the benefit in a charitable remainder trust of a current deduction off of the assumed remainder. If the IRS is assuming very little growth in a CRUT and you're taking out a lot of money over your life, they're gonna assume a very small remainder. And so there's not a great current benefit from a charitable remainder trust. As they start to assume more growth into that trust, you get a bigger deduction and, it, and that helps you offset income from other sources. All the other inner workings of a CRUT, which is the tax deferred growth, um, tax-free growth are work in both interest rate environments. But here with the growing interest rates or the, the rising interest rates and the rising assumed value of that remainder that goes to charity, you're getting a bigger deduction for going into a CRUD. And th those, that. each of those strategies could be a 20 minute discussion in and, and to themselves. Indeed, we have previous podcasts on that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, well, you know, I know we're uh, coming up probably on the end of this segment, which is a nice teaser yeah. into, uh, Carl, how these strategies rely heavily okay. on the work you do to okay, make them effective. Very good. So um, I, I don't know if you guys have any, like, fine-tuning questions on those strategies, but those are two of the major ones. There's, there's some others, you know, things called uh, GRATs all functioning on the same principle. It just assumes that your rate of growth inside the strategy will allow you to transfer wealth or get deductions that exceed kind of your actual economic uh, the cost. investment cost. Yes. Mm -hmm. a, if so, I'm a, if I'm charitably inclined, and, but I also want a tax deduction, now that rates are getting a little bit higher, and it seems like the remainder trust would, would accomplish my goals. I'm putting money in there. I might get a little income out over the next 20 years, let's say, but I'll get a nice charitable deduction today. 
for a gift that's going to go to charity in the future. Right. right. The real, the, the, the uh, here's the secret sauce behind the clat. So it is a great way to, if you have a big income event now, mm -hmm. like you're exercising options or you are getting a big bonus or, or there's depreciation recapture on the sale of something. Right. So you have a lot of ordinary income coming in. The CLAT helps you if you're if you're committed offset, that, offset yeah, that yeah. because you get you can deduct up to fifty percent of right. that income item with what you commit to the CLAT, but the CLAT's not actually making those payments for many years hence. Yeah, really. The secret or the real opportunity in my mind in the CLAT, especially for the ultra high net worth, those who have exceeded their lifetime exemption or or are close to exhausting the lifetime exemption. That remainder value that is assumed to be left over at the end, because the IRS is still assuming so very low rates of growth, is very is valued very low. So let's say we do that $2 million gift. Our current deduction is based on what the IRS assumes we're giving in present terms over that period. So say it's a $1.5 million um, deduction. They assume the remainder then is about $500,000. So we take that two million that we put into the trust, we can transfer that remainder for a value of 500. And if you do your job, teaser for the next segment, Grow it. we have a lot more left over than 500,000 at the end that we've now extracted from the estate, assuming the person lives longer than 20 years. Well, that's gonna be a great conversation. So, uh, yeah, I get really excited about this stuff. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's jump into it for next time. Thank you for listening today and uh, create a beautiful day. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the information we shared. If you enjoyed this podcast, please feel free to share it with someone else and join us next time. If you want to meet with a member of the team, please contact us at info at expertnetworkteam.com. That's info at expertnetworkteam.com. If you have special topics you'd like to hear about, please reach out to us and let us know at the same email address. Again, that's info at expertnetworkteam.com. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We want to remind you that listening to this podcast does not establish a client professional relationship with any of the firms represented nor does it constitute legal, investment, or accounting advice, and the views are those of the professionals only. Investment advisory services may be provided through a Financial Services, and securities may be provided through Genios Wealth Management.